All right, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? It's time for Cruising with a Case Handler right here on Facebook. I'm asking everybody to start sharing. We are now on 93.5 FM. Also, I've got a bunch of attorneys ready to speak with them. Got two lovely ladies and I got a gentleman here, but we'll introduce them shortly. Right now, here's what I need everyone to do. I'm going to take 30 seconds out, attorneys, to do this. Everyone that's watching us on Facebook, do me a favor, start sharing. Sharing groups, I, I got my phone in my hand, you know, and I'm actually sharing right now. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. If you are on Facebook watching us right now, sharing groups, sharing uh, pages that you manage, share it on at least 20 individuals' uh, timelines, all right? I am David Squeezanicki, I'm a broadcaster, I'm an entrepreneur, and one that definitely, definitely is advocating for you here in the United States to get in the right status, and it will happen. All I need for you to do is just keep listening to the show. We will beat the odds, ladies and gentlemen, as to what it is the current administration, current because it won't be for long, all right? Um, and we'll eliminate them. All right, the current administration is not on your side. And as my friend and attorney would say, immigration is a minefield, all right? It's a minefield and we need to make sure that you don't step on one of those mines because boom, you're gone. And we don't want you in removal proceedings. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let's just get the show on the way. 93.5 FM listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for blowing up the phones on the weekends. But I need for you all to actually start placing your immigration questions in the comment section on Facebook or start calling 844-774-3529. Uh, That's 844 774 Three five two nine eight four four PPID law. This show is brought to you by the law firm Pollock Pollock Isaac and DeSico. And yes, it is an attorney advertisement, but more so about helping you and understanding what you need to actually get in status. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the panel. I'll do the ladies first. We've got the boss lady, Alexandra Bondikov, an attorney at the firm, an immigration attorney at the firm. Welcome, Alexandra. How are you this morning? I'm great, thank you. And you? Absolutely fine. Did some workouts, still in my workout gear here. Hope you all don't mind. All right. And uh, we also have Shira. That's just the nickname we gave her. Andrea Scher, welcome to the show again. It's good to have you back. Second week in a row, I see. All right. All right. And then we've got the boss man, the man himself, the man who runs the firm, the managing partner, Conrad Pollock, the man who is responsible for everything happening in these segments on the radio station and on Facebook. Mr. Conrad Pollock, how you doing? I'm good. Hey, you're looking uh, pretty buff there, man. You're making me uh, self-conscious. Yeah. I'm used to I'm used to being. You're pretty. I'm used to being the biggest guy on this show. You're making me uh, self-conscious here. You yeah, know? you're the tallest guy. You know, you're the tallest <laughs> guy. You're still the biggest guy. You know. By the way, folks, he's in excellent shape. If you see this guy, you should stop by the firm at 225 Broadway or up in Peekskill or in Brooklyn and see what he looks like. But. He is the one that, of course, you know, guide you through the minefield. That minefield is immigration. So, Conrad, I'm giving you three minutes, man. Only three minutes to say anything you want to say on immigration before we get into the show. Listen, I'm capping you. Three minutes. So fit your 10 minutes in three minutes. All right? All right. Start start, start your clock. <laughs> um, I, I just Actually, the ladies have, have a lot to talk about today in terms of... I, I know. I things, know. Things come, but I know you're going to interrupt. I'm giving you three minutes. Well, just they're going to be, I don't want to steal their thunder, but they're going to be talking about things that are other uh, uh, minds to strew along the field on your way to getting your green cards and your work visas, just things, other things that the administration has planned. Just before we came on air, we were, we were talking about how, you know, the one area that this administration is really efficient at is just screwing immigrants, you know, and just making the immigration uh, feel just as difficult to manage as possible. That's the one thing they're good at. Stephen Miller, who is Trump's right-hand man, and he's his immigration guru, you don't hear anything about this guy. He's in some back office somewhere hidden, and you understand why they hide him if you see what he looks like. Uh, but uh, all he does is think of ways to screw immigrants and just make their lives harder. That's, he has the single-minded purpose in his life, and that's what it is. And unfortunately, he's very good at it. Uh, he knows the fault lines in immigration. He learned under the best. I mean, he this guy, Stephen Miller, worked for uh, um, Jeff Sessions, who was not too long ago our, our attorney general, who uh, that's another story. But anyway, um, 
there are a lot of bad things coming along. And, you know, the other thing we were talking about before the show began is there is no reason to wait. If you're planning on filing an application, you need to file it. Filing fees are going up in October. The election is in November. Don't wait to see what happens. Although, assuming Biden wins, things will lighten up and you'll be glad that you did file. And even if he doesn't win, if Trump wins, you want to get your application in. You know, there is no reason to wait. And again, monetarily speaking, filing fees are going up dramatically October 2nd. So you want to file your cases now. But my time is up. I will defer yeah, to the Your time is up. I was just about to say. <laughs> All right. So ladies and gentlemen, we call him the maestro, also known as the voice, Conrad Pollock, a managing partner at the firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. We spoke with Fred the Seco earlier this week. Excellent show we had with him. A fabulous show, I must say. Now, these attorneys are getting very, very versed as broadcasters. Even the boss lady, Alexandra Bondikoff. And I'm gonna jump right to her right now and see what she has to say on immigration. However, if you are listening to the show right now on 93.5 FM, I'm going to guarantee something. And not I don't guarantee much in life. I'm going to guarantee you that you will get a 100% free phone consultation, immigration consultation with an attorney at the firm, Paula Pollock, Isaac and DeSico, PPID. However, I need for you to call before 10 a.m. So every single one of you, you may want to ask your question of Alexandra, Andrea, Conrad, Nelson, the other immigration attorneys at the firm PPID, and you want to do so in privacy, here's what you do. Dial this number now, get ready, all right, and tell them that you want a private phone consultation. Here's the number. Call before 10 a.m. The number is 844-774-3529. Call now. That's 844 844- 774-3529. This show is not a tape. We're live. It's Thursday, September the 3rd. So give a ring and get that free U.S. immigration consultation. 844-774-3529. Let's kick it to Alexandra Bondakov, one of the attorneys at the law firm PPID. Alexandra, once again, welcome. And I know you've got a lot to say on the show today. So let's jump right into it before I take it over to Andrea also. Um, I, I just have two things today, really. Mm-hmm. Um, the first is an update from the Department of State um, that we got recently within this week. And I think it's going to be interest, interesting to um, uh, the listeners as we did discuss the topic. And I had some uh, questions on the show. It pertains to K-1 visas. Uh, Department of State said that consulates, as they start to reopen. Um, oh, hold on, Alexander. Get- what is a K-1 visa? The K-1 visa is a fiancé visa basically. So um, uh, DOS has authorized consular posts to give those type of visas the highest priority. They have also stated that for uh, petitions that were affected by the COVID closure, uh, there will be no need to file a new I-129, which is the first step in the process. The consular officers are authorized to uh, keep on extending the validity in four uh, four month increments. Is there any reason why they are giving that priority right now, the fiancé visas, the K visas? Uh, I guess because they are fiancés of American citizens. Um, so they want to keep families together. Uh, but it's good news. It's certainly good news. That's awful. Um, Alex, let me interrupt you just for, for quite, I had a question. Because, um, I mean, we have our own policies at the firm in terms of fiancé visas. Uh, a lot of times uh, we, depending on the circumstances, don't think it's worth it to a client to file a fiance visa and that they should instead apply for a green card. What, what do you think about that? I agree with you. Um, uh, process-wise, it's about the same amount of time um, and money-wise, it's not cheaper. So I feel like if you have to do something, you might as well go straight for the I-130. But sometimes this is not possible. People cannot travel during COVID so they can actually get married. It may be appropriate in certain circumstances. But generally speaking, all things being equal, um, I, I would almost always recommend uh, marriage and then going straight for uh, the green card. Gotcha. Hey, Squeeze, she's, uh, she's been trained well, right? I, I see. I mean, she's on point. I mean, she's killing it, you know? And that's the reason why everyone should choose the firm PPID, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. So once again, you got to call before 10 a.m. Call now and speak with one of these top attorneys at the firm. Get your immigration questions answered for free, the consultation. However, however, and I will say this, hire them. Do not file your case yourself. I can't impress that up on you enough. So I implore you, hire them after you get the free phone consultation. 
The number for that consultation is 844-774-3529. Well trained by Conrad Pollock, okay? <laughs> All right, so 844-774-3529. I'm just pushing Actually, you I had another point I wanted to elaborate on the fiance, because, you know, fiance meaning, typically, you know, people think fiance, I mean, so well, we're not married yet. But under immigration law, you can still be a fiance even if you're married. Um, that is a K-3 visa, if I'm not mistaken. K-1 is a fiancé if you're not married. K-3 is a fiancé if you are. Um, there is a, an immigration created out years ago, that, that category, as a way to get people here faster. In effect, though, the, 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 the fact is th that is a farce. There, if you are married, there is never a reason to apply for the fiancé visa. It is always the, uh, the right way to go to just apply for the green card, file the hour thirty, and get the marriage case going. Timing is pretty much the same. And if nothing else matters, you only have to do it once. If you're married and you apply for the green card, you, you, you apply, you do the case, and you're done. As opposed to getting a fiancé visa, then you come to the United States with a fiancé visa, then whether you're married or not, you have to apply again to get your green card. So it's a two-step process. You have to pay twice, you have to wait longer. There is absolutely no reason to do that. Again, there are times when it makes sense to apply for a fiancé visa, visa if you're not married. But if you're married, fiancé visa, K3, is a waste of time and money. Don't ever do it. Yeah, well, well, they're not going to do it anyway because you are going to be their attorney. So, you know, I, I think our audience is extremely smart to know that they should not file their own paperwork, seeing that something can happen when they do. So that's the reason why they will call you or Alexandra or Andrea at 844 Seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. Alexandra, did you finish up what you wanted to touch on today? I, I just wanted to point something out, and it's um, as we say, hot off the presses. It's a proposed rule to expand the use and collection of biometric information from applicants. Um, just as historical uh, perspective, fingerprints have always been a requirement when people apply for certain benefits, such as green cards, for example. And back in the day, it used to be the ink pad and a piece of paper, and they would, you know, literally, ink your, you know, stamp your fingers on that piece of paper. As technology progressed, they started scanning the fingerprints. But what this administration has done is it expanded the use and collection of biometrics for other types of benefits, most importantly, the extension of non-immigrant stay or a uh, change of, of non-immigrant stay, the I-539. Mm -hmm. And what that did is create uh, another step in the process and, of course, a delay in adjudicating these applications. Um, so with this new proposed rule, and again, I'm underscoring it's a proposed rule, um, the administration can collect not only your fingerprints and, 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 and your likeness, your image, but they can collect voice prints, they can collect your iris scan um, and your DNA. Um, and they justify this by saying, well, uh, it's all a part of this uh, extreme vetting policies that we have in place. And we want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're not involved in any gang activities, criminal activities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if there's ever a question about your relationship with your uh, petitioner, if you're, if you're applying for your child or your parent, we can use that DNA to make sure that it's legitimate. Um, relationship. Uh, what is even more important is, is that this rule would not only apply to people who are applying for benefits for the first time, but also people who are already permanent residents and, and they can collect that type of information up until they become citizens. Um, again, it's a proposed rule, which means that it, it will not be in effect until and unless uh, DHS provides a period uh, for comments uh, to the public and um, I think this is, this is a great part of our democracy when people can participate in rulemaking. So when that, that rule is published, stay tuned, we'll provide um, information on how to comment uh, on this rule. Gotcha. Alex, well, didn't, th I was reading through this as well. Uh, did I, didn't I see something about they're gonna take the, the biometrics of, this, of the petitioners as well? That if you're married, and you're applying for somebody with a green card, you as U.S. citizen, they're going to ask for your biometrics as well. Didn't yes, I see that? And, yes, exactly. And also, if you're applying for your child, that's how they're going to make sure that that biological relationship between the two exists. And by the way, uh, the use of a DNA uh, to prove a relationship is not new. However, what, what is different is, is that 
um, you would go to a, to a third party that would conduct the DNA test and you would provide the results to USCIS. Now USCIS wants to be the one taking that information, they can use it for who knows what other purposes, you know, facial recognition, I don't know what. That's, that's the difference, and, and I think it's significant. But get, get this, folks, also, again, this is not just targeted at immigrants. If you get married or you want to apply for a child that you had overseas, or I mean, you're going to be subject to these tests as well, and they're going to get all of your information as well. Talk about Big Brother. I mean, it's I, unbelievable. I, would, uh, I was just saying, I was just thinking that also. It's unbelievable. What are we going to do? Anyway, uh, what are we going to do? We got to make sure this guy loses. Exactly. Exactly. Get reelected. This is craziness. It's completely well, not. So right. Donald Trump would have had to get fingerprinted when he petitioned for Melania. Right. Fingerprinted, right. DNA tested, <laughs> and get a right. look out of his eyes. I mean, are you kidding? Crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, once again, this show is about immigration. All right. And I know a lot of you out there would love to have your immigration questions answered. Um, I have the longest running immigration talk show in the nation, and I'm very happy that we now have the best law firm. I can say it, they can say it, the best law firm handling this. We've got individuals who are so experienced there, it's unbelievable. And uh, I'm very happy that we're doing this. We're very happy that we're helping out the community. I want to thank Conrad and his team for actually giving away free phone consultation since earlier this year, since the pandemic started. It's a beautiful March. thing. March. Yeah, there we go. And uh, everyone out there, if you think I'm joking, dial this number now and get yourself a free immigration consultation or text the number to someone to get that. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. This show is on every single day. We love the feedback that we get, especially on the weekends. But make sure you make the connection, make the call. And don't just call and don't call back. If you call and you don't get someone, make sure you call back. You want to take advantage of it. I personally do not believe everything is going to stay free forever. I Nothing lasts forever. I, I, don't, I just don't believe everything lasts forever. So make that move. 844-774-3529. Not that I don't trust Conrad, but I know not everything lasts forever. All right? He's got to pay his bills too. And he's got to pay these attorneys. So at some point... It's going to end. So make sure you call 844-774-3529. Let's go to Andrea. I'm quite sure she has a lot to say on immigration. Also, before we get to the questions here on the show, cruising with a case handler, the immigration segment. Andrea, welcome again. Thank you. Um, I wanted to just expand on the fee increases that uh, Conrad brought up. So it's not only that the fees are increasing, which they are significantly, but also in the past, when you uh, people that didn't have a lot of means or a lot a big income or whatever, they could uh, file for something called a fee waiver, which would allow you to apply for free. You would just have to show that you don't make enough money, that you have too many dependents, and that you just can't pay for for the application. And they would give you allow you to file for free. Now they eliminated the fee waivers. It will only be applied to people that have. Uh, Violence Against Women Act case, uh, victims of crime or victims of trafficking or special immigrants, that's it. Anybody else that wants a fee waiver will not be able to get it. So if you're 70 years old, you don't have a job, you're retired and you wanna apply for naturalization, you're gonna have to pay over a thousand dollars for it. You cannot get a fee waiver. So that's one of the significant changes. Um, Another one is for adjustment of status applicants. Adjustment of status applicants are uh, immediate relatives that are usually in the United States and they file to get their green card. As of right now, when you file, you can request an advanced parole document and an employment authorization card while your petition is pending without paying any fees on it. But the new rule changes that. So now if you file for adjustment and you want a work permit while your adjustment is spending, which is common because obviously you'll have an, a document to work, um, you're going to have to pay the fee. So now the fee is not going to be $1,760 for you to get your green card and get a work permit, okay. but you're, you're going to have to pay $2,860 to be able to obtain a work permit while your adjustment is pending. So it's it's a very significant. So that's that's 
the just expand. So the point that you're making is that people should move now, act now, right? Yeah. I mean, we're already trying to get everything filed before October 2nd. So the faster they come to us, the easier it will be to help them because as we get there, it's going to be a lot harder for us to work so fast to be able to file everything before that day. I always something, something to think about as well. You know, those of you out there that are don't have a lawyer doing this thing yourself, if you send in the wrong application, for instance, the I-765 work authorization application was just updated. Uh, if you send in the old application with the old fee before October 2nd, it gets bounced back because you didn't sign it or you left, you left something blank or you sent in the wrong form. Guess what? You're going to get your application back. You file it today. You're probably not getting that application back until October and you'll be paying the new fee as a result. So something to think about. People typically do these types of things themselves because they don't want to spend money on a lawyer or my, my friend or my neighbor did it himself and said they didn't need a lawyer, so on and so forth. Uh, that is a recipe Conrad, for disaster Conrad. more times than not, folks. Conrad, seriously, let, let's just put things in perspective here, all right? You are in the United States, you're out of status. You're working, you're taking care of your family, you're doing many other things that you're spending money on. You spend money on food, clothing, and shelter. Now, one of the most, if not the most important thing to you and your family happens to be your status in the United States so we can continue working to take care of your family. Why would you not want to find the money? And I sound like an ass, ladies and gentlemen, but not really. Why would you not want to find the money? Do whatever it takes, legally, of course, do whatever it takes to ensure that you find that money, reallocate, reprioritize things so that you have the money to find an attorney to do it right the first time so that you don't burn yourself and your family, ultimately. Get your priorities together. Stop listening to what people are saying out there, the naysayers. Stop listening to your family, the guy down the block and all of that. Do not do it yourself. I have heard the horror stories, heard about the nightmares. I have taken calls, I have conference calls in with the attorneys, with, with of course PPID, and I've heard it all. Take some time, make it a priority, call the firm, get a free phone consultation, at least they're giving you a free phone consultation, and then, you get back with your family and figure out how you're going to take care of this with the attorney. Ask them for a payment plan. All I'm simply saying is this, don't do it yourself. Donald Trump is kicking people out of the country and he does not care, all right? So make the move now. And all I gotta say is this, the fees are going up, file now. Call the firm, 844-774-3529. Once again, the consultation is free. Make the call at least. 844-774-3529, 844-PPID-LAW. Sorry I had to interrupt you there, but you um, may proceed, Andrea. Just to add to that, I also wouldn't be surprised if immigration starts sending applications back for technicalities so that people have to pay the higher fee after October. Now, I mean, Alex recently received a packet where they said there was no check, there's a problem with the fee, and the checks were the first thing that we sent in the application or the submission. So they do that. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do that again now that they're going to change the fees. Right. And, and, and this is not, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is not, this is not about the firm or myself trying to, to, to earn on the commercial side. This is genuinely about us making sure that you do things the right way. At least make the call and get the free phone consultation. But I seriously, as an immigrant myself, I urge you, do whatever it takes to hire this firm, PPID, to handle your case. We're seeing a lot of nightmares and horror stories. Make that call to them right now. I say try to call before the top of the hour. The number to call the firm and get that free phone consultation, and then you hire them, is 844 774 3529. That's 844 774 3529. If you call, you don't get them, call them back, set up an appointment, and make sure you retain them. 844 774 3529. You can no, rele relevant, to, relevant to what we've been talking about. Squeeze, it just it brings to mind uh, a caller we had asking, asking questions the other day on, on Monday, I believe, who was saying how she had done this application and everything was ready to go last year in September or October. Um, and they sent everything to the National Visa Center and everything was pending there. And for whatever reason, things got delayed. 
And now she's saying, well, you know, now the console's closed. My son is about to turn, just, he's about to turn 21, uh, or her sister's son is about to turn 21 years old. They did the application themselves. And now, because it took a lot longer than it should have, as a result, they're subject to the visa ban. So now that child who's about to turn 21 is not going to be coming. And if Trump gets reelected, that, that travel ban, which currently extends to December 31st of this year, if he gets reelected, I can assure you that travel ban is going to continue for the next four or five years, as long as he's in office. All right. And that person, as a result, her son will now be 23, 24, 25. They have to submit a new application for the kid to get a green card. Ten years. All right. It'll take him 10 years to come here as a result. Because they try to do it themselves to save a few bucks. And as a result, this is what happened. Right. That's a typical example of the type of situations we see. Right. And you know, the fine, you want to save a few bucks and maybe your neighbor did it successfully without a lawyer. But these days, the ramifications of it going wrong are substantial and can be severe. And here's a perfect example. This woman was on the verge of having her son with her after waiting for probably six, seven years for the petition to be ready. And now as a result of the travel bans and everything else, the kid's going to age out. The kid's not going to be here for a good 10 years. So if she wants to see her son, she's going to have to go see him in, her, in his country, not here. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, you are in tune to Cruising with a Case Handler, a show on immigration today. Uh, make a call to the attorneys at 844-774-3529. The name of the firm, Paula Pollock, Isaac DeSico. We call them PPID. And I'm quite sure you're down with PPID. Uh, Andre, anything else you want to top off before we extend on the Facebook? Um, just to talk about those crazy scenarios, I had a call yesterday. Um, they filed an application with immigration in 2015, and they never received absolutely anything. They paid for the fees. They paid for everything. They never even got a receipt. They called immigration, and immigration told them that the case had been terminated, which makes no sense. And then now they called and asked me, like, what can we do? And I'm like... I mean, it's kind of late. You're not going to get the money back. I mean, we can try and figure out what happened, but it's unlikely that you're going to get that money back. And you just, they should have sent you a receipt. They should have given you a decision and, you know, but that's, that's what happens. And they didn't keep a copy of it. So it was just a mess. Um, so that's one of the things that can happen. Well, unfortunately, a lot of times people move, you know, she filed, they filed their application five years ago. They might've moved in the interim and didn't notify immigration. So immigration yeah. maybe responded to their old address. And as a result, the thing got denied and terminated. And now they have to start all over again. Exactly. Using a lawyer, they don't, that's not a problem, especially a firm like ours, where we've been in our current location at 225 Broadway in New York City on the third floor. Never reason to go yeah. higher than the third floor, folks. But um, we've been there for, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years. I, I lose track. So we're not going anywhere. We're not moving. So your, your application, your receipts are not going to get lost. That's for sure. Absolutely. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're getting to the top of the hour and ending the show on 93.5, but continuing the show on Facebook. You can go to our Facebook pages, mine, David Squeeze Anarchy, the firm's PPID. Just look up PPID Law. You'll find them right there on Facebook as soon as you type it in. All right. And once again, we have phenomenal immigration attorneys at the firm, ladies and gentlemen. We've even got someone that Conrad jokes about all the time, says he's got like 80 years of experience. All right. That's because of his depth. His name is Alan E.K. He's one of the attorneys who has a link with the Department of Homeland Security, with immigration, picks up the phone, makes email, make connections. God forbid something is being delayed. So reach out to the firm. One, you're getting a free phone consultation. 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. You can hear the passion in these ladies, of course, the attorneys here talking about immigration. You can hear the passion in Conrad's voice and how we're eager to help you. But we can't help you if you don't make the link to the firm. 844-774-3529. Once again, immigration, it's a minefield. And with this administration, they're screwing us. All right. So don't try to file your case yourself. Let the professionals do it. It is the reason why they went to law school. It is the reason why they've been doing it for decades. Reach out to them. You're here, make the link, 844-774-3529. That's 844-PPIDLAW. Go on their website, check them out, find out the history about them, and make your connection. 
774-3529. We're flipping to Facebook, so join us there. David Squeeze Anarchy or PPID Law. It's 10 o'clock. And we continue on the other side. You all ready for some questions, attorneys? Sure. All sure. right, let's jump, let's jump right into the questions here on the immigration link within the cruising with the case handler. And uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, place your questions on the WhatsApp group or place your questions on Facebook. Also, just a gentle reminder and kind of, kindly want, I'm kindly asking you to share on Facebook pages, in groups, and on timelines. First immigration question. My mom's green card expires this month. It's been six months since she applied for the renewal. Does anybody know how much more time it can take before she receives? It could take a year. Normal times, they, they filed an I-90 and um, normal times it could take anywhere from six months to a year. These are not normal times, it could take even longer. Um, but they just have to continue waiting patiently. You know, if the, if, if, the per, if she needs to travel or whatever, uh, she and her visa, her green card's expired, she obviously can't use that. Um, she can go to immigration through following the proper procedures, of course, uh, get an appointment and try to get a stamp and a passport to allow her to travel. But, but uh, why, why should she waste money? Why, why wouldn't she just file for a citizenship? Good question. She might not be eligible. Who knows? Maybe she doesn't speak English. If it's English, being expired, does that mean that she has had it for a while? States. What's that? If, if, if it's being, if it's, if the card is expired, that means she has had the card for a while. So more than likely she should be qualified. Well, maybe, maybe she spent more than two and a half of the last five years outside the United States. Then she okay. Or there's approach. a concern about not being able to pass the test. Maybe, maybe, maybe she has a criminal conviction also, right? Right. There are a lot of reasons that people don't qualify for citizenship, even though they've had the green card for the requisite five years. There are plenty I mean, of reasons. But in assuming she does qualify for citizenship, right. that's good. That's a good point. I mean, I would apply for citizenship as well. I would recommend that as well if she's eligible. Absolutely. But but isn't she? Fact, is is, is the possibility people, there that she could be put in removal proceedings if she probably have a criminal conviction and she's renewing her card? If she has criminal issues, that's a problem. Potentially applying for a new green card or for citizenship. Either either way, it could be a problem. In that situation, if she has criminal issues, she needs to talk to somebody at our firm, show us the dispositions for those crimes that she committed, and we can tell her what she's facing, what the risks are, what the what what the possibilities are likely to be. Yeah, I believe she should call one of you attorneys right now because when I see people renewing their green card, I've always asked myself, why are you renewing your green card? Speak with an attorney at the firm you know, and, and find out what they can do for you. But I do believe that you need that blue book. It's a very powerful book to have, especially this time in this country. So- Not anymore yeah. though, we can't go anywhere with that blue book, so. <laughs> Exactly. It's okay, but, but if you're from another country, you're from uh, Barbados, you're not giving up your, your Bayesian passport. Yeah. You, you can be a US right, citizen exactly. and a Bayesian citizen as well. I've got both. both passports. That's right. I've got the, the United, States, the United passport. States does not require uh, that you give up your old citizenship. We recognize dual citizenship. So well, that's not an issue. And a couple other countries. But the other country can, and Indians, for example, cannot be dual citizens. So that may be a consideration as well. Yep. Right. Once again, hopefully you all learned something from that, Facebook viewers. Uh, do reach out to the firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSeco. Let that name sink in your head, PPID, 844-774-3529. The attorneys today with me, Alexandra Bondikov, Andre Scheer, and Conrad Pollock. Let's get to the next immigration question here. I had done my interview for F1 visa in March, 2020 and consular officer kept my passport and gave me the white slip 221 G for additional documents requirement. But I, do, I didn't get any email from the USA embassy. Please tell me what can I do now? Please guide me. You should, that person should be emailing that consulate, um, look up their contact information F1s, F1 visas are not subject uh, to the visa ban. There is no reason why this person shouldn't be following up with the consulate. About this. Someone like this should actually call you guys, right? I'm sorry? Yeah. Someone like this should actually be speaking with you guys to find out more information and have you handle that, that too, yes, yes. Well, okay. also a lot of times people might say, Alex, people might say F1, and we know that as a student visa. Oh, so it, could be, it could be an immigrant visa. You're absolutely right. You're right. Sometimes people will say F1, very good meaning, point. meaning it's a first preference case, meaning it's a citizen who apply for unmarried son or daughter. And right. if that's the, that's the case. Guess what? You're subject to the travel ban, my right. friend. All right. That's you exactly might, right. You might and not I'm thinking F1 student visa. <laughs> you might 
you might not be getting that green card for years if that's you, if Trump right. gets reelected. Right, right. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the attorneys knocking down the questions. Place your questions on Facebook. Place it in the uh, WhatsApp group. All right, getting to another question here. want to say thanks to Tracy Spence and, of course, Alyssa on that side and managing the back end, of course, getting me um, these questions on my cell phone to make it easier for the team here. All right, here's question number three. I am in the process of opening a small restaurant soon. Can I bring my siblings to work? I have a salon business now, but it's really slow because of the pandemic. So I am switching to food industry, which is more essential. I'm trying to figure out how this relates to immigration. It does. Alex, take it away. Well, there are options. Uh, this person should definitely be calling us. All right. Because I, I, I don't even understand the question itself, but I'm quite sure you attorneys who know what's going on behind the scene, okay, this well, person to call you. Off, she, off they're, they're, it, it sounds like they may be looking for, as a, at an investor visa. You know, if you open a restaurant, depending on what country you're from, if you open a business here, uh, you get an E2 visa. Um, you could bring in people from your country to work there, depending on the skills that they have. And that could include relatives, although that makes it, it makes the, the, the situation a bit more difficult. But that's something they could be discussed, they, they could have in mind. Right. Yeah, and I'm thinking H2B, like everybody's like, you know, I'm thinking H2B too. So there's definitely options, but it's going to take another hour. <laughs> and what's the H2B? I like H2B is for uh, temporary workers. Gotcha. Okay, once again, ladies and gentlemen, cruising with a case handler right here in the immigration segment. Dial the number 844-774-3529. Get that free phone consultation and then hire them. Let's get to another question here. Question four. I just got my green card and was expecting to go back to my job soon. I was pregnant and had my baby this July. Due to the pandemic, my company, also the green card sponsor, had bad performance and they want to lay me off. Of course, no compensation or any package. Since I just received my green card, the attorney told my boss that they still need to hire me for at least six months. Therefore, my employer forced me to take unpaid maternity leave for six months, and they are planning to lay me off. I feel very frustrated by this situation. I feel I am stuck by this job with no paycheck and no right at all. Does my company have the right to do this? Sounds like a different area of law also. But proceed. All right. Okay. So here's the thing. There is, so it looks like it's an employment based green card. Uh, there is no requirement that uh, the person work for a certain number of months or a period of time for the petitioning company. Uh, the six months is basically a suggestion that most of uh, immigration practitioners tell our clients. And that is only uh, for purposes of uh, naturalization, right? Because back, you know, when you when you apply for naturalization, uh, if you haven't worked for the petitioning company for for a certain period of time, immigration can say, well, was it truly a bona fide job offer, right? So it depends on circumstances. If it took several years for this lady to get her green card through the petitioning employer, and she worked for that petitioning employer, it's not really crucial that she work for them. For another six months after she got her green card. Also, I think that during COVID and because she lost her job and the, the, the company was affected by COVID, that would make a difference. So basically, uh, I, you know, I, I don't think the company can force her into this, but she should be consulting an employment lawyer. I would you know, I just, just, just my, my own two cents here. If you look at it from a particular perspective, you could, you, you could say that the employer is doing her a favor. The employer has nothing to lose by firing, by firing her tomorrow. Uh, the, 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 all the risk is on the, uh, the worker. Uh, the, the, when you're applying for your green card through employment, you have to demonstrate, the worker has to demonstrate that there is an intent to work there on a full-time permanent basis. And the employer has the same intent to employ that person on a full-time permanent basis. Things change, all right? There is no six months period. That's just a suggestion, like Alex said. It could be a month, it could be a year. Six months is just some random number that they threw out. Fact is, though, given the circumstance of what's going on right now, there is no reason that this person has to stay on this unpaid maternity leave. And that's ridiculous. But again, the fact that the employer even offered that possibility is that they didn't have to do that either. They could just say, you know what, take a walk. We don't need you. We're, we're, at, we're going out of business. 
you know, good luck, best of luck, and, you know, we'll see you. So e either way, there's no reason for her to stay in that situation. Now, that, that, whoever told her that doesn't know anything about immigration law. Especially if being on unemployment would allow her to collect unemployment benefits. I mean, that's right. That's also not insignificant. So there's, there's so many considerations here, and, and many of them have nothing to do with immigration. So... Especially, she's been on that already for a couple of months. That's more than enough. There is no magic six month number, none. Thank you, attorneys. All right, final question here that I have for now, at, at least, um, on this immigration link segment within Cruising with the Key Sandler. It says here, hi, a friend applied for the I-130 for her father in 2017, and I am a joint sponsor. Case is still at the MVC. Now recently, they asked her to provide the new I-864 because it expired in March. Does it mean that we have to resubmit or submit rather 2019 tax returns as well with the I-864? Because I didn't work in 2019. I have previously provided 2016, 2017, and 2018. Yeah, let, let me just jump in here. here. Here's a perfect example of somebody who didn't use a lawyer, all right, and is now paying the price. They filed that case in 2017, three years ago. A case like that, we do that in our office. Andrea, how long does a case like that typically take? A year. Thank you. Or less. Right? They've yeah. been waiting three years and they're not even close to getting the green card. If they have to go back to the NBC and do all the, the affidavit support again, they're probably looking at another six months. All right. So by the time they're done, they're in three and a half, four years in a case that should have taken a year. Unbelievable. And this is the reason why we say, ladies and gentlemen, reach out to the firm, get at least that free phone consultation, and then hire the attorneys, work something out with them, and get your process handled by them. Once again, this has been the Immigration Link with Cruising with the Case Handler. Um, you can catch us weekdays, 9.30 a.m. in New York on 93.5 WVIP FM, and also on Facebook, the pages, David Squeeze Attiki, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, that's PPID, and also on the Case Handlers page. I want to say thanks to the wonderful and phenomenal and great attorneys at the firm, Paula Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, for answering all the questions today and giving us immigration news and update. Anything else anyone would like to say before we end our wonderful show here? Yes, please, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't really answer that last person's question. The fact is, yes, oh. they're going to have to go through all of the documentation again with the NBC, submit a new I-864, new supporting documentation. And again, you want to hire a lawyer. Maybe you want to wait another three years other than that. <laughs> That's going to run for you, folks. All right. The number once again is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Thanks to all the people on Facebook who have shared this show. Please continue um, doing so, so that others can watch it even after the show ends. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again, attorneys. Looking forward to catching up with you again very soon. It's been great.